Welcome to Swillengrog's Wonderful World of Beer, the premiere episode for 2013, and I'm joined by my good friend Benelzebub, and what should we be reviewing but Devel, Belgian Golden Ale, 8.5% <laughs> alcohol by volume, a product of Belgium. Now, uh, Benelzebub had this in his fridge and uh, encouraged me to uh, review it, so uh, yeah, I've never tried it before, but um, I know that it's quite highly regarded, so... Um, I think it's high time that uh, we grabbed our bottles of this and cracked it open and uh, made an assessment. Devel is Dutch for devil. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Okay, so I'll just crack it open and there's the Kegworks bottle, open, bottle opener for you, Mr. Benelzebub. I'll pour it out into this uh, Kozel glass. And I have okay. a Liefer glass from Belgium. <laughs> Well, as Jez would say, it's a very uh, active beer, getting an amazing amount of head there. Beautiful head, very lively, beautiful golden colour. In fact, it's so active, this goblet-shaped glass is holding the head rather too well. I'm going to have a bit of a challenge. It most to certainly is. It in there. I thought I'd have no trouble fitting this bottle in here, but um, gee whiz. There, look at that. Isn't yeah. that a beautiful pour? What you'd expect from the devil. Uh, indeed. All right, well, uh, the appearance is a very uh, light, you know, golden yellow colour with, um, you know, a decent amount of carbonation. Uh, hopefully the camera can pick that up, but there's a lot of, uh, you know, bubbles like streaming to the top there. It's it's a cloudy gold. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's, it, it is somewhat hazy, in fact. Yeah. Which you, you expect mm. from Bennett, Belgium monastery style beers. Mm. I mean, it's uh, not completely opaque, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, certainly, yeah, there's a bit of haze there. Mm -hmm. um, it's, in terms of head, there's about, uh, you know, three, I'm getting about three fingers of, um, you know, bubbly, bright white head. <laughs> mm -hmm. mm, but, uh, gee whiz, it uh, sure looks good. Anyway, uh, on to the aroma. Well, first and foremost... You know, picking up the hops there. Mm, the hops are definitely prominent. Yeah. Lovely. And there's um, sort of a presence of, um, you know, something sort of fruity. Yeah, it's a yeasty, you know, as well. fruity, maybe mm. an apricot. Yeah, perhaps. Maybe yeah. maybe slightly caramel, mostly apricot. Hmm. But I'm, what I'm really not detecting is any kind of malt. No, not, not malty at all. Not No. Mm. Anyway, I think I'll just uh, top this up just a little bit. Okay. I definitely think yeast, hop, apricot, and very light fruits. But look at how creamy that head is. That's um, yeah, truly amazing, and it's <laughs> the sign of a um, yeah, truly superb um, beer, actually. So uh, anyway, uh, on that note, it's uh, time for the taste test. So uh, cheers to you all. Cheers to you all. <laughs> 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 All right, let's dive in, Benelzebub. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> oh, it bounces off the tongue with its sparkling mm. bubbliness, doesn't it? Indeed, yeah. Very effervescent, very fresh. I mean, there's, you know, a nice hot bite to it. Mm. I mean, in the um, aftertaste, I am sort of picking up a malt presence now. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and it's, it's a nice mm. aftertaste. It's, a, mm. it's a quite a mm. good kind of transition. Yeah. Mm. I mean, uh, <clears throat> yeah, very you know, pleasant tasting, very smooth. Very smooth indeed. For a beer that's 8.5% alcohol, you would not know. Yeah, I mean, the uh, alcohol presence is definitely uh, you know, very well concealed. Yeah, mm. very smooth, well-brewed mm. beer. I love the... The, the light effervescence that's coming off the, the bubbliness, it just jumps off mm. your tongue. Oh, most definitely, yeah. Look, this is truly superb. I mean, I can see why it's, um, you know, held in such high regard. Anyway, uh, time for another gulp. <laughs> <laughs> Still just as effervescent. I'm really impressed with that. Mm. Now, it's certainly holding that taste profile. And I'm picking up that kind of... Um, you know, fruitiness um, as well, like in the finish. 
It's, it's mm. supple now. It's kind of more like a, um, mm. not quite rock melon -y. You know, mm. like somewhere between apricot and rock melon in a very subtle way. Yeah, no, it is very subtle, but um, I mean, it's it's definitely interesting, and it really does um, you know have some unique characteristics to it. So, um, you know, it definitely has those kind of qualities that uh, you know do distinguish it from you know other you know golden ales. So, <laughs> yeah, can certainly uh, see why you know. Definitely Belgian. You yeah, can, you can definitely <laughs> yeah. see that it's, it's a Belgian monastery style beer. Yes, Although it's not brewed in a monastery. This one. No. No, not that I, I believe not. Mm -hmm. But. Um, definitely has a character. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, you can't really go wrong with the Belgian beers. I mean, um, yeah, they're definitely, um, yeah. Sipping doesn't, mm. Mm. sipping is, is a little bit too tame. Mm. I think you need a gulp with this mm. because it is, after all, the devil. <laughs> Indeed. It may have the ABV, um, you know, to uh, be a sipper, but, uh, Definitely, um, you know, like I said, the uh, alcohol presence is very well concealed. So, um, yeah, one does feel compelled to just simply gulp it. So on that note, let's have another gulp before we, um, yeah, give it a score out of 10. You know, I'm thinking fish and chips. Yeah? I'm thinking a nice meal of fish, mm -hmm. especially maybe grilled barramundi and mm -hmm. salad, would be perfect with this beer. So in terms of food pairing, you would pair oh, it up with... Uh, yeah, it's light, golden and refreshing. Mm. I would definitely go fish, especially a white fish. Mm. Lovely with barramundi. Mm. So one thing we haven't covered off is, is its uh, you know drinkability and sessionability. Um, Benelzebub, what would you uh, say, um, you know, as far as its, uh, you know, in ter what, what would it, how would it rate in terms of its, you know, drinkability and sessionability? I, I believe that... Um, you could certainly sit down and have a full night session on this. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. The thing well, it's is, going to hit you like a ton of bricks the next day. It is, it is called the devil, yep. after all. And so there will be a giant bite and giant price to pay. Um, <laughs> I, I think that's why I mentioned food in the first place. So yeah. it would be probably better to drink this with a meal and mm -hmm. then leave it at a couple of, maybe two of these mm -hmm. would be would be the limit. Let me just start topping up on Yeah, so that you um, really didn't go too far down the track. Mm. But for taste-wise and mm. refreshingness and effervescence, it feels like a beer that you could sit down and drink all night. It really does. No, it definitely does have the characteristics of, uh, you know, a beer that might be at, you know, 4.5 or, you know, 5% uh, alcohol by volume. So. Yeah. You could easily like throw this down unknowingly, especially you know, in, and, um, in, in summer yeah. like it is today. Mm. It's the fifth of January. We, we've had uh, 36, 37 degree temperatures today. Mm. It's, it hasn't actually rained yet. It's, it's looking like it's going to rain, but mm. with that kind of temperature and humidity, a beer like this that's so f refreshing and effervescent, mm. you could easily mistake it for a much lighter ale and or lager, I should say and be just throwing this down, much to your detriment in the next morning. <laughs> Alright, so uh, in terms of a score out of 10, I would probably be inclined to give this a 9.5 out of 10. It's pretty darn good, and uh, I would, uh, you know, suggest that you all, uh, you know, uh, check it out if you can uh, get your hands on it. I would have to agree, I would, I would definitely rate it over 8, over 9, definitely. Mm. It is a signature Belgian beer. It is, if you want to understand strong Belgian lagers, this is what you need to to, to at least have an appreciation of. Definitely in the 9.5s, 9.7 maybe. Very, 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 very typical of an excellent Belgian beer. <laughs> Indeed. Well, uh, hopefully, uh, you know, you got through all our babbling and everything. I mean, um, you know, we're pretty toasted at the moment. So, uh, yeah, I do apologise to you all for that. I usually try to do these reviews sober. But, um, you know, sometimes you have to be, uh, you know, suitably refreshed. To, you uh, are at the Benelzy Bub's mm. place after all. Yes, well, I am at Benelzy Bub's place. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> anyhow... Um, yeah, so uh, what would we agree on, about a 9.5? Let's call it 9.5. Yeah, I, I, no, I, I think 9.6. 9.6. Because that's for, more um, of a Benelzi Bub number. Indeed. Yeah, 9.6 for uh, Duvel Belgian Golden Ale. The 
devil. <laughs> the devil, indeed. So, uh, there you go. Well, uh, that brings us to the end of yet another Swill and Grog beer review. So, until next time, fare thee well, all. Cheers, Proust. <laughs>